Hello everybody and welcome to another Let's Play. This game is Lord of the Rings. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why is there a Lord of the Rings in DOSBox? Well, this was one of the original Lord of the Rings that I'm going to Let's Play. It's not the very original of this game, but it's the one made by Interplay back in the 1990s. And I'm playing the enhanced CD, CD-ROM version of the game, which has some pretty kick-ass audio tracks. So I think it justifies itself, if you ask me. Now, setting this game up, you actually have to uh, do, run the install from the, the CD itself, tell it to copy all the movies. And believe me, the install actually takes, takes a bit of time, even on a modern computer like mine. like Mine's an i7 and all that. It still took a while, just because it's... I think it's just the emulation part of the, the DOS box thing. So anyway, um, without ado, let's get this started. And if you guys have any questions on how to set this game up so you can play it, if you've got this, the CD and all that and want to know how to rip it to a bin.q, just let me know. So let's get this party started here. First thing I'm going to do is let's just type in Lord. J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. You do a new game, an old game. You could run the tutorial, uh, the dem demo version. I, I wouldn't do that, or the interplay demos. I don't think those those will work, but maybe we'll look at those later. Um, but for now, I'm going to run a new game so you guys can kick back and watch the footage. And I'll shut up, or I might do some Mystery Science Theater 3000 on you. So anyway, let's... Let's do a new game. Warning, it's going to erase all save games. We don't care because we don't have one. Long ago, in the early years of the Second Age, the great Elven Smith forged rings of power. Nine for mortal men. Seven for the Dwarf Lords. Three for the tall Elf kings. But then the Dark Lord learned the craft of ring-making and made the Master Ring. The one ring to rule them all. With the one ring, Middle-earth is his, and he cannot be overcome. As the last alliance of men and elves fell beneath his power, he did not notice the heroic shadow who slipped in. It was Prince Isildur, of the mighty kings from across the sea, who took the ring. But because he did not destroy it, the spirit of the Dark Lord lived on, and began to take shape and grow again. But the ring had a will of his own, and a way of slipping from one hand to be found by another, so that it might at last get back to its master. And there the ring lay at the bottom of the great river Anduin for thousands of years. During Bye -bye. those years, the Dark Lord captured the nine rings that were made for men and turned their owners into the ring race. Nazgul. Terrible shadows under his great shadow roamed the world, searching for the one ring. To rule them in all. In time, the ring was found. Two friends were fishing in the great river one day. Hey, it's me, got a... Oh, precious. Give us that, Seagull, my love. Why, Sneagle? Because it's my birthday, my love. And I want this. I have already given you more than I could afford. I found it, and I'm going to keep it. Oh, are oh, you indeed, my love? Wow. Smeagol's brutal. He used the ring for thieving and to find out secrets. His own people began to despise the wretched creature, and to call him Gollum. <laughs> Ooh. Tortured and driven by the ring, he hid in dark caves and a deep mountain. 
precious. But the ring slipped off Gollum's finger, too. And so it was that Bilbo found it during his travels with the dwarves. Here we go. Baggins, thief! It stole our precious, our precious. I th still like the modern one more, modern golem. This one was just way too cheesy. Anyway, here's the next one. Seventeen years passed sleepily in the shrine. Seventeen years passed pretty quick. Look at all this flashing. There's Frodo. All right, all right, just a minute. Gandalf! Greetings, Frodo. Gandalf, it's really you. Oh, it's been so long. Seventeen years since Bilbo left. You look the same as ever, Frodo. You look older, Gandalf. Well, I've been on a long journey. It's the ring, isn't it? Bilbo's funny magic ring. You always used to look like that when you talked about it. Bilbo's funny ring? That makes you invisible? Give it to me, Frodo. Give, Give it to me, it. me Marius. That's from Diablo 2. Can you see any markings on it? There are none. It's quite a plain ring, really. Well, then, look. <gasps> Wait. Do you desire it so much already? No, but, well, but why ruin it? Because it is altogether evil. It will corrupt and destroy anyone who wears it until he passes into the world of shadow under the power of Sauron, the Dark Lord of Mordor. Not Bilbo! You are the one who has the ring now. Huh? That's freaky. Look at Gandalf's size. It's not even warm. No. Not even a dragon's fire could harm that ring. Ash, Naz, Dabatulu. Ash, Naz, Gimbatulu. What was he casting a spell? One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness find them. There you go. All right, so now let's get on to the tutorial. All right, so now I'm just back at the screen, screen here. I didn't actually start a new game, so it's, we could see a tutorial real quick. By Mr. Gandalf the Grey, who will be our advisor. This is Gandalf the Grey. It is the duty of wizards to instruct those who wish to be prepared to fulfill the quest of the ring and save Middle-earth from Sauron, the Dark Lord of Mordor. The key to understanding how to play the Lord of the Rings is understanding the interface. The interface is a display of symbols called icons that appear at the bottom of the screen when the right mouse button is pressed. Here, in the safety of the Shire, we will push the right mouse button and bring up the interface. At the left-hand side of the screen is the status bar and a portrait. The portrait will always be that of your party's leader until you choose someone else to lead. The status bar indicates the percentage of life points the character has lost. HP. If the character goes to five life points or below, the character is unconscious. If he goes to zero life points or below, he is dead. But you're a wizard, Mr. Gandalf, sir. You can bring people back from the dead, can't you? No, Sam, I cannot. Now be quiet. Oh, sorry, Mr. Gandalf, sir. 
<laughs> oh, it's... No, where was I? The first icon is the sword, which represents combat. The first thing about combat is... It... Allow me, Boromir, captain of Gondor, to discuss combat. Only men are fit to describe the thrill of battle. Very well, Boromir. Your ability to hit a target in combat is dependent on your strength and dexterity. Characters with high strength scores, such as myself, will do extra damage to a target. The ability to defend in combat is dependent on dexterity and luck. A valiant warrior is under attack from foul orcs. You are that warrior. Click on the sword icon with the left mouse button and you will get a choice of combat maneuvers. Foes with no combat skills have but one combat option, attack. Those who have a special skill with bows will have the aim maneuver. This makes the archer more vulnerable to attack, but increases his chance to hit and does additional damage to the target. Those who have a special skill with axes will have the swing maneuver. This is not as accurate as a regular attack, but does much more damage than ordinary blows. Those who are skilled in swords have the ability to perform a block. This maneuver does less damage than an ordinary blow, but improves your defense. Once you have chosen your maneuver, you will then receive a choice of target. If your target is seriously wounded, you will see a star next to its name. If it is almost slain, you will see an exclamation point. And, Boromir, if combat goes badly, you can attempt to run away. Move your character to the edge of the screen by clicking on the left mouse button on the screen in whichever direction you wish to move. Be warned, it is impossible to flee from some of the servants of the Dark Lord. The second part of the interface deals with characteristics. These are measurements of a person's essential qualities. On either side of the character's name, you will note these arrows. They are not ornamental. If you click on the left or right arrow, you will be able to change the character to another member of the party, allowing you to quickly look at everyone's statistics. These arrows appear in many areas of the interface, such as using items, skills and magic, and work in the same way as in the characteristics menu. The third icon allows you to grab items. Usually, when items appear, you will be given a chance to grab them immediately. But if you need a second chance, use this icon. The fourth icon allows you to manipulate items. It gives you the ability to do the following things. Discard items. Equip weapons and armor. Show the items in your inventory. Trade items to those nearby. And use items such as food and athelus. The fifth icon is skills. Sometimes a character would be forced to perform an extraordinary feat, such as picking a lock or jumping over a chasm. To perform such a feat, bring up the skills menu and click on the need. The sixth icon involves magic. Magic in Middle-earth is rare and dangerous and should be used only in extreme emergencies. The first type of magic is called a word of power. These words invoke creatures of holiness or power and may confer a blessing upon those who speak them in certain situations. Spells, on the other hand, may only be used by a wizard such as myself. They have effects such as countering magic, projecting fire, and speaking with animals. Spells will always drain the life force of the caster, so use them carefully. The seventh icon on our list is the talk button. Let me tell them about it. Oh, please, Gandalf, please. Very well. And now the Shire's leading expert on talking, Pippin took. Oh, thank you, Gandalf. Talking with people is a lot of fun, and gathering news is especially important. Use the talk button to talk to people. You can recruit people into the fellowship with this menu. Or dismiss them. And question them about important subjects like news and weather and the latest Shire gossip. Yes, news is important. Now run away. The eighth icon is the leader icon. The leader of the party is more likely to take damage from traps than the others. The person you choose as a leader may influence how other people deal with you. 
For instance, a party led by an elf in elven woods is more likely to be respected than one led by a dwarf. Remember that. Most carefully. The ninth icon allows you to interact with the computer. You may save your games, load saved games, quit your game, pause your game, turn music and sound effects on and off, and bring up the automap. The final icon allows you to exit from the icon menu and go back to the game. And so we end our tutorial. One last word of advice. Your initial goal is to get to Rivendell. The Shire contains simple challenges for you to learn how to play the game, but the forces of the Dark Lord are deadly. Avoid the Black Riders at all costs, and good luck. You may the force will need be it. you will need it that's what we were saying may the force be with you and wow they had a hint book for this i don't know i never got one so who knows maybe they might have one online somewhere in a pdf archive so there you go that's a tutorial for this game all right next episode of this let's play we're actually going to get into the gameplay all right so that was that was it for today. So this is Tifa's Revenge signing off and I will see you guys next video. Take care.